Hello, hello. This is Debbie Dashinger, and welcome to Dare to Dream. It is my joy and my pleasure, as always, to be here with you. And thanks for being a part of this journey. Remember to subscribe, to like, to comment, to send this show to somebody you know needs to hear this. And I do read all your comments. Today on the show, I finally have a guest who people have been asking me about. I've actually known him for years and years. And we started out doing stuff together like this, but here he is again, and he's still built some incredible career. Today's show is going to feature Emmanuel Dagger, whose core work method is a quantum healing technology. And we're going to be talking about divine alchemy and a quantum leap in healing. This show, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger, won the Coalition for Visionary Resources Award for Best Radio and Podcast Show. It's listed in Welp Magazine as one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to. It's listed as a top self-improvement podcast on Apple Podcasts, has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards and a Webby Award. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. They do energy work out into the world. And if you'd like to find out more about their classes or become a facilitator, Join them at Dr. Dane here, H E R dot com or accessconsciousness.com. I'm Debbie Dashinger, and I teach spiritual messengers how to be visible at a time when you came to be visible. I'm a book writing coach, so I show you not only how to write and finish your book, but how to make it highly engaging. I've also got an independent company that takes your book to a guaranteed international best-selling status, and I do all the heavy lifting for you. And finally, I show spiritual entrepreneurs how to be interviewed on radio and podcast and get massive results. And if you'd like to learn how to do any of these pieces, they're all ongoing. I've got a gift for you. Go to debbie-dashinger.com slash gift and get your templates and get your how-to videos so you can become visible massively right now. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash gift. My guest is Emmanuel Dagger. He's a transformational specialist, holistic health practitioner, and a teacher who's co-created positive shifts for thousands of people worldwide. Having gone through unfathomable challenges and loss during his early turbulent years in the Middle East, and having been a refugee of war, led him to parapsychology, holistic, and alternative healing gifts. Emmanuel developed the core work method. It's a quantum healing technology. And Emmanuel is also an accomplished musician, sound healing facilitator with an extensive library of energetically and vibrationally infused musical arrangements that contain unique tonal sounds proven to shift emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual blocks that impede one's capacity to experience a fulfilling, balanced, and optimal life. Emmanuel has had the honor of presenting at the United Nations, the World Congress, and other national and international events and summits that promote peace, love, and healing. And if you would like to learn more, find out at his name, emmanueldagger.com, and it's D-A-G-H. E-R dot com. And with that, I welcome Emmanuel to the Dare to Dream show. Mm, so good to have you. Oh my gosh, Debbie, thank you so much for that. And it's so good for this reunion. I'm so happy we're <laughs> back together in this way. Yoo-hoo! Reunited and it feels so good. You know what I'm so excited about it is your growth. You know, you were spectacular and I meet, met you 12, 15 years ago and you were such a young, powerful pup, right? Old, old soul, so young and doing exquisite work back then. I love seeing the trajectory of all you've created. And I'm amazed at this part about the music. Can we start there with the musician piece? Tell us about that. Ah, thank you so much. Well, it's so um, synchronistic that you say that because... Mm -hmm. I'm so excited to be sharing my next chapter of my musical journey um, in the next few weeks. So, um, you know, wherever my website is, everyone can check it out. But um, for me, healing really started with music. I remember mm -hmm. when I lived in the war, when things were really challenging and hard, we had one VHS tape and that was the sound of music. Uh -huh. so, 
you know, when she comes out at the beginning with the mountains and you see, mm. you hear the the air and, and the wind and you just kind of really immerse yourself in those beautiful, almost or- orchestrated uh, sounds, um, it's never left me. It's always been with me. So I wanted to create things that would be very epic and orchestral and um, uh, cinematic, but also have healing components to them. And that's how I started getting into the sound healing piece. But it's been an amazing journey. Um, It's one of the most fulfilling parts of doing this work, because Mm. for me, I think I am a musician first, and like Mm. a healer, you know, therapist second, but it's it really fills me. What do you play? What so I play the piano, um, but then of course you know you can basically do uh, so many different sounds with that because if yeah. you have a motif, um, you know they come with different uh, cards that you can use to do different sounds, and then a lot of the music I create actually we had a lot of, we hired a lot of um, live um, orchestras, so there was a lot of you know. A lot of a lot of it was digital, but a lot of it was live. And then we combined the two to use um, some of those healing tones like solfeggio, binaural mm-hmm. beats, and all the fun stuff. And then really created something amazing. That's amazing. That is amazing. I and I love that. I um I also rediscovered music in my life. I'd been a singer my entire life since I was a little baby. No and- way. Yeah, I used to play guitar and I used to be an excellent violinist and all that. Now I'm just okay at guitar, but I play djembe drum and I'm in a band and we do sound healings and um, very spontaneous, I don't know, very spontaneous channeling, it feels like, but it's, it is also my first language, I feel. So I understand that and I'll have to scurry over there to listen to some of that if you've got samples. And if you ever need backup singers. (laughs) <laughs> oh, happy, happy jazz hands. You're in. Yes. We're always looking to collaborate actually. So thank you. I'll remember that because that would be beautiful. I think the yeah. healing aspect, one thing I found, and let me know how you feel about this, but I notice what, it doesn't matter what my voice sounds like, how pretty, how whatever, what matters is the love that fills the room and everybody responds to that. That's where the healing really starts, how the room is held. hundred percent. Yeah, it's really about the feeling uh, rather than the perfection or the so-called perfection. Yeah. And so here you are, my dear, you're empowering people to become their own greatest healer. How did this become your passion and your mission? Mm. So having seen so much turbulence and uh, suffering, and and we're still seeing a lot of that happen. I mean, we recently saw what's happening with the earthquakes and stuff like that um, in that part of the world. Um, It really awakened something in me. I remember, I don't know exactly how old I was. My mom says I was five, but um, there was an experience where she was at work she was a lab technician at the time at a hospital. And um, I was at the house with a babysitter. Um, and then my stepdad came in after that. And during that time, there was an invasion that happened uh, in our village. And so there's bombs and there's- Tell folks what country you're talking about? Lebanon, okay. Lebanon. Yes. Um, so during that time, um, you know, there was a lot of- uncertainty and and instability but up till then I had not really experienced because prior to that I lived in a convent and there was some safety there because they didn't really go behind those walls and do things but um, then we moved because there was a little bit of a uh, time where it was a little bit better but then in that day um, when they invaded we it was surreal. First of all, as anyone knows who's been, whether it's in a car accident or some type of uh, challenging experience, it's almost surreal because you almost get out of your body and you have this, um, I I can't describe it other than like slow motion and 2020 vision at the same time. It's just so interesting. But I remember when that happened, um, the first 
uh, emotion that I reached for was fear. I'm five years old. I want my mom. Did my mom, you know, something happened to her. Um, so that actually went on for about a week and my mom didn't come home. So I remember being in my room and just in the closet and just praying or not knowing what I was praying to, but just affirming to the universe or, or whoever, whatever that energy was, that if my mom was able to survive, I'd, it's funny, I didn't even really care about myself. I was just more focusing on my mom being okay, because she was just my everything. We're very close. And um, I remember just saying, if she was safe, if, if everything was going to be okay, I would spend the rest of my life doing something I'm like five I guess um that would help people that would make them feel better that would make them uh feel happy you know that's sort of the brain at that time happy right like you you don't know empowered and inspired at that time you just know simple words so I I knew I liked making people happy so you know uh, a few days later my mom came home and uh during the cease uh fire and it was just that day I made made a decision. I said, universe, God, um, I'm going to be the best person that I can be for myself and for others. And that's the path I want to take because I do know a lot of people, a lot of my friends took the complete opposite path because they saw a lot of hardship. They saw a lot of pain and suffering. They turned to uh, doing things that were maybe not kind and loving just to kind of be seen and heard and acknowledged but something inside of me just said nope you want to go this path and then we came to the states when I was 11 um, and again I have an amazing mother who was so supportive and loving for me and towards me but at a, around 11 12 um, we realized that I had scoliosis I had psoriasis I had stuttering um issues i had i had so many things right ptsd um and we definitely saw a lot of western medicine and doctors and things like that but she also allowed me to see a lot of eastern medicine and and healers and and acupuncturists and yoga and meditation and things like that so I definitely gravitated towards that because it was less invasive and it was more gentle. And that's sort of like my, my energy. If you know me, I'm more of a gentle kind of energy. So it resonated with me. And um, that's sort of combining all of that with some of the challenges and the lessons that I learned. Uh, went to school, background in psychology, then, um, you know, a lot of spiritual holistic uh nutrition and and different things combining it and then we came to the core work method and that's what i do now which is so so rewarding for me what an amazing story do you ever today have any withhold from that time period is there are there things that come up complications because of what you experienced you know thank goodness no it, it took a long time, a really long time to get here. I think probably about five years ago, a turning point happened because I do see myself as the guinea, guinea pig, right? Like I'm always the reference point, doing all the work on myself first, like always, always, always to make sure that it's working and helping people. And so, and I have a dear friend, a best friend who I taught this, uh, process and then we do it together and it's just kind of basically an everyday thing and we still do it it's part of our self-realization kind of expansion process um so about five years ago i'd say the nightmares and a lot of the um you know night sweats and feeling like always looking the other shoulder like there was a lot of stuff that i had to and i didn't even realize some of it was happening still in my 20s and early 30s because, um, you know, sometimes we have blind spots. So this work has really helped me look at all those blind spots. And we still have blind spots. Obviously, we're always growing. But when it comes to the initial trauma and the war and all that, um, I can really think about it and not get emotional and cry. Like, although there's nothing wrong with that, but I feel very neutral about it because it almost feels like 
I feel so far removed from it. Oh, amazing. That's beautiful. I'm happy for you. I really am. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, because that's a lot to have the past living in the present and all the effects of the past. I understand that. And so that makes me curious, what is this core method? How does this create such substantial healing? Mm. So thank you for that question. And one more thing before I answer that is I, anyone listening right now, you know, it might not have been like a war the way that maybe I experienced, but everyone has been through challenges. Everyone's been through struggles and there's no more or less. It's all the same because we, we are sensitive, energetic beings. And, um, you know, we've been through our story, but one thing that I wanted to share is that <clears throat> because of what I went through, it always makes me root for the underdog. And it always makes me feel connected to people that are marginalized and people who are always uh, not seen and heard. Like those are the first people that I go towards and, and do my best to make them feel seen, heard, and loved and recognized because I know <clears throat> what it's like to have, yes, I had an amazing mom, but you know, there was a lot of time where we were not physically together. So I know what it was like to be abused and, and mistreated. So mm. just know that I hear you and I see you. And, and so does Deb, you know, we, we hear you, we see you. And I just wanted to, that was important to share. So the yeah. core work, um, just basic three principles is we start with, does the mind feel seen, heard, recognized, honored by you? Does the body feel seen, heard, recognized, honored by you? And does your spirit feel seen, heard, and acknowledged by you? So those are like the, the foundations to, we can call it a checklist. And if you are focusing on getting physically better, but you're not focusing on taking care of your mental and spiritual self, you're still going to have an imbalance and vice versa. If you're only focused on personal spiritual growth, but you're not in this world, you're kind of like in another place. We, you know, sometimes that happens because we want to escape some, some of the struggles we're having, that's going to create an imbalance as well. So the key is balance. And the way we do that is my mind feeling seen, heard, acknowledged, loved by me, is my body feeling the same, and is my spirit. And then the next question that I usually ask is, what would life look like? Or what would it feel like if you became the most loving, most compassionate, most safe, soft landing of a presence to yourself? The way that I see it, I see it as a, a grandmother energy or like a wise oak tree. I'm super into nature. So mm -hmm. sitting under a, a beautiful oak tree does that for me, where you feel that grounded, peaceful, wise, elder energy. What if there's a part of you that is already that? And what if we can, because obviously, if you're watching and listening to these types of things, you are doing that for a lot of other people. But what if you can do that for yourself? The core work teaches you how to do that for yourself by checking off those three things we talked about. And there's a process we can do that as well today uh, where you can just make sure that all of you is feeling seen, heard, and nourished and loved by you. Because if your mind doesn't feel seen, heard, and acknowledged by you. And we know a lot of people in the new age communities and even in religious communities, they're always vilifying the mind and they're trying to make it like it's evil, bad, uh, ego. You know, we hear all these things. And what happens is when the mind feels unsafe in your presence, it's going to do everything that it can to protect itself from you. And if your body doesn't feel safe in your presence, it's going to do everything that it can to protect itself from you. So all that's asked of us is to gently refine our perspective, move it. It's almost like a dial, like sundial, just move it in a different direction so that all the love that you were taught or the, the you know, how to take care of others and how to make them feel better 
just gently, you know, turning that dial a little bit so that you can receive equally that kind of love for yourself in such a way so that your mind can start to feel safe in your presence and want to work with you instead of fight against you so that your body will start to work with you instead of fight against you or protect itself from you. So that is my passion. And it's, you know, it can happen in so many ways. It's not just the core work. People can do it through meditation. They can do it through music. Uh, what a, a nice peaceful walk. But what I've found is really speaking, you know, my, my, um, psychologist mind, the kind of scientific mind has to also be acknowledged. It's not all about rainbows and butterflies. And that's great. It's wonderful. But it's also important to use specific um, uh, processes that can help the mind organize and understand and comprehend that healing is possible. And it can happen for you. And it can be outside of time and space. And it's like, whoa, oh my gosh, I was able to heal from PTSD. I was able to heal from scoliosis. I was able to heal from skin issues and not being able to speak. I mean, the 11, 12 year old version of myself would have never believed that I'm going to be speaking for a living. And I'm sure that you have a story about that too. It's, it's just crazy. So miracles can happen. And the way that they can happen is for you to simply shift that dial and allow all of you, all aspects of you, all the parts of you, mind, body, spirit, to feel seen in such a way that they will start to work with you instead of against you. Wow. That sounds amazing. Um, so I want to take you up on that offer to yes. do a process so we can experience exactly what you're saying. I mean, on one hand, I'd like to give people some relief for wherever they are right now. On the other hand, it sounds pretty yummy. So if, yeah, if you'd be willing to gift us with that, that would be beautiful. Absolutely. So the first thing I want to invite everyone to do is just close your eyes and just take a deep breath. And if you want to place your right hand over your heart, just feeling that heart hand connection, just feeling that connection between your hand and heart. And as you exhale, just feel yourself relaxing into the chair or wherever you're sitting. Now, if you're driving, please stay present and alert. You can do this later. But if you are able to relax, go ahead and close your eyes and take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, just feel yourself sinking more deeply into the chair, the bed, the couch, wherever you're sitting on the floor. Just let yourself fully be supported by that object. Good, let's take another deep breath in. And release. So the first thing that I'm going to invite you to just think about before we actually do the healing process. I invite you to think about the fact that everything exists in relation to one another, meaning we are all one. Everything exists because, so for example, the chair or whatever you're sitting on and you right now have a relationship. We often forget, you know, we think relationships are with just people and maybe our pets, but you are relating to everything. You're relating to this podcast. You're relating to the chair you're sitting on, the air that you're breathing, the oxygen. You're relating to the room that you're in. You know, a lot of times in spirituality, you hear the concept of oneness, but it can really go over our heads if we haven't um, simplified it. And for me, one of the things that is very important is to take really hard and challenging concepts and make them very simple to understand. And for me, when I understood the principle of oneness simply to be that, it just means that everything has a relationship with one another, whether that relationship is expansive or it's not expansive, well, that's besides the point right now. But everything 
exists in relationship to something. So right now, I want you to think about the chair or the couch or the bed, wherever you're sitting, and just express acknowledgement through gratitude. We are so grateful for this chair. We are so grateful. And when you are grateful, because the thing is that chair has been serving you way more than you've probably been aware of the fact that you're serving it. And how many things in our lives, whether it's food that we eat, the bowl that's carrying the food that we're eating, how many things in our lives do we have relationships with that there's a little bit of an imbalance there because we're not acknowledging it. And acknowledgement happens through gratitude. So let's express deep gratitude right now to the chair, to the couch, to the bed, wherever you're sitting for lifting you up, for supporting you, for taking good care of you. Let's just sit with that for a moment. Okay, so from this space, what if there's a part of you, capital Y, that is spirit, that is source, that is creator, that is all knowing, all encompassing, and that part of you is here right now. But there's also a part of you that has forgotten itself. And a lot of that has just been through learned behavior. Things have been passed down, traditions, ancestors. And then there's a part of you that is physically the manifestation of all of that, the divine source, creator, universal self, and then the part of you that has forgotten. And it's in this physical body. So I want you to think about your mind right now. And I want you simply to acknowledge that you have a relationship with your mind. And when I'm saying you, I'm talking about the observer presence, that spirit self, the fact that you are listening to this type of presentation is a confirmation to you that you know that you are a spirit. And if you don't, you can always contemplate and connect with that part of you more. We can do that on another time. But I want you to acknowledge that although you have a spirit, you also have a relationship with this beautiful thing called your mind. And so this mind has been trying to keep you safe and protected the best way it has known how through conditioning, through studying, learning. And as you do the inner work, you realize that it doesn't have to be so survival-based. It can actually be very empowering and transformative. So I want you to thank your mind. Just thank it for all the ways that it tried to protect you, whether it was through fear, whether it was through frustration, whether it was through anxiety, whether whatever it was, worry. We're not judging. We're not trying to get rid of any of that because that's how your mind has been operating for a long time. But also the mind operates through joy, and peace, and there's a lot of things that it can actually tap into as well that it has been able to. Maybe it's been a while. So let's just express deep gratitude for all of it. We're not judging good or bad. We're simply acknowledging that your mind exists and it has always tried to keep itself safe. Let's do that for a moment. Let's express deep gratitude. Good. 
take a deep breath in and release. So now we're going to ask the mind if there's anything that it is concerned about, if there's something going on, it could be, you know, you might have a bill that you have to pay and it's been really challenging or you might have been diagnosed with some physical dis-ease that you're worried about. Whatever it is, I just want you to ask your mind, you, capital Y, you, the conscious, loving observer self, the spirit self, you're going to ask your mind if there's anything that it is concerned about, if there's anything going on that you can support it with, and just see what comes up for you. I'm going to give you a moment to do that. So it could be anything. It could be finances, relationships, anything. Once you get clear on what the mind's discomfort is as far as the experience, you are going to honor the mind by asking it, how does it feel about this whole experience? Because it's really about the feeling. What is the feeling underneath that experience that it's concerned about? It could be worry, it could be frustration, anger, hesitation, whatever it is, let that come up right now. You are shining a spotlight on your mind so that it actually feels like it's receiving acknowledgement and support from you. And it may actually create excuses and resistance at first because it's not comfortable. Maybe it hasn't known what it's like to be supported unconditionally by this beautiful presence that has always been here. And that's okay. If those thoughts and concerns and the resistance and the armor come up, thank them and just come back and ask, how do you feel about that initial discomfort, that experience? How do you feel about it? So now once you get clear on the feeling or the emotion, whichever one feels good to you, your body is always speaking and your body is going to tell you when you're uncomfortable, it's going to tell you by feeling it in a specific part of your body. So for me, for many years, and sometimes it still comes up, the anxiety or some of the Frustration that I feel is often felt in my solar plexus, in my stomach area, just a little bit above the belly. So for you, it could be your shoulders, it could be the, the temples of the, the head, it could be your jaw, your lower back, your hands, wherever that is for you. When you think about that experience that was causing you some challenges, where do you hold that? in your body. See, as a society, we are taught to numb and look for the next thing. And now we're seeing it more. Although we love social media and things like that, because it can bring us all together. It also is all about on, running on a hamster wheel. And what's next? What's next? And it's to make it so that we don't actually feel what's causing us discomfort, because the mind doesn't like that. It wants to feel safe. That's the number one goal of your mind. And when you become a warm, loving, soft landing of a presence for your mind to be able to do that, it's not going to resort to the fight or flight patterns of keeping you safe. It's actually going to relax and soften because now something else your divine self, your goddess, God self is stepping in to support it. 
even though it's always been doing that, it just wasn't aware of that. So let's take a deep breath in and see and feel into where you're holding the discomfort. So again, for me, when I feel anything that's causing me discomfort, it's usually in my stomach. So I'm going to place my hands there right now. And I'm just going to allow that discomfort to exist. I'm not going to push it down. I'm not going to ignore it. Yes, my mind will say, oh, maybe what am I going to eat for dinner tonight? Or what am I going to do tomorrow? Thank you, mind. I know you're just trying to protect me. Thank you. And just come back to that tightness, whatever that tightness, that discomfort, that pain, whatever it is in your body, let's acknowledge it. Because your body is using that simply to ask for your love and your attention. When your body feels fully loved and seen and heard and supported by you, it will not have this feeling of discomfort. Because right now, there's room for us to show up more for our body when we think about the emotional things that were causing us stress and anxiety. So let's just sit with that for a bit. This is you simply loving yourself. This is you acknowledging yourself, your body and your mind. Mm -hmm. And so now what will happen is if you are someone who's been doing the work for a long time, you will start feeling a, a release, a softening, because when a certain part of the body feels acknowledged and then the mind also feels acknowledged, this firm grip that has been happening, trying to get our attention to do this right now, which is to show up for ourselves, will just relax and soften. And you can liken it to feeling peace. Some people feel warmth. Some people feel a release. They feel lighter. Because this is your body and mind's way of letting you know that they have been acknowledged. So if that doesn't happen in the time constraints that we have today, that's okay. I want you to sit with these processes so you can go back and listen and watch where you first ask your mind if there's anything going on, if there's anything causing it discomfort, see how it feels about that. Where are you holding it in your body? And you just sit with that for as long as you need. So when I first used to start doing this, sometimes it would take me about 45 minutes to an hour just to have that release. Now it's maybe 30 seconds to a minute. But the key is consistency. The more you check in with yourself every day and you make this a top priority, you're checking in on your mind. How are you doing? It's like a good friend. How are you doing? Is there anything that I can do to support you? Same thing with your body. How's it going? What is there anything that is feeling a little bit off? Let's sit with that. And through acknowledgement, you're going to have a release. You're going to have a softening occur. It's almost like this firm grip softens and then light starts coming out from that and then it even opens up and then there's like either sunlight or i see it as a beautiful flower that has been there the whole time that is radiating light and you can see it however you want but just know that the more you practice that the more of that release you will have so let's just keep focusing on any lingering discomfort let's sit with that for a moment And from here, if you have even the slightest softening occur or a release, express deep gratitude to your body for playing the perfect part in this healing today. And then after you do that, you can also do the same for your mind. Express deep gratitude. Yes, we have maybe 
decades of things to still resolve. But in this moment, you created space. You created an opening for healing to happen. And that's all that healing is, is coming home to yourself in such a way that you create the space for healing to happen. So what will, you know, it might not even feel like it has anything to do with it. It could be a call that you get tomorrow from a friend and you hear something differently and you're like, oh, I should have thought of that. Let me go to this place and get this thing that's going to help me do this. So it's all connected. Mm -hmm. And when we acknowledge all aspects of ourselves, and gratitude is the best way to acknowledge not just the body and mind, but your spirit self. Because when we went back to that first step, the, the pre preceding the first step, which was acknowledging that everything exists in relationship to one another. So the fact that your body and mind exist couldn't happen if your spirit didn't exist. So then you start seeing the oneness and to your uh, spirit, this is its love language, right? It's it just this oneness, this peace, this connection, this communion. And that's what it wants for your body and your mind to feel mm -hmm. in their own time, because your spirit is always in that space. It's just now we're going to work with your spirit intentionally to show your body and your mind this healing and these possibilities that can happen for this expansion. So that was a quick little process. I just want you to take a deep breath in real quick and just give yourself a big hug and just know that you did such a great job, no matter how much you felt or little you felt. The most important thing is that you showed up for yourself by trying it. And if you didn't feel anything today, even just slightly more space, more peace, then come back and revisit it and do this process often. And eventually you will start to feel that peace, that ease, that grace, that is your natural inherent self. That is who you are underneath the fear, the worry, the stress. All that is just learned behavior. Your true self is not that. Your true self is peace, is love, is freedom, is unity. That's who you are. And we're just bringing you home to yourself. So thank you so much. I get a little loopy when I do that. <laughs> yeah, I can see why it's incredibly relaxing and reconnecting. That was superb. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for allowing me to do that today. Yes. I know everybody received a lot. And you know, to your point about opening yourself up, there's something to be said about widening back. It is in the widening back instead of the attachment or whatever's going on that things can come in, information, guidance, and all that. And a couple of months ago, I was talking to a friend and she was telling me just a personal story about her daughter. But I heard something and, and I knew in my belly, I need to know this person she was referring to. And I ended up working with them and they opened up tons of things. Very, very, very positive. And more recently, I had something going on physically and I was just sharing it with my sister-in-law. And she said, you know, I, when I had that happen, I went to go see, I went to Chinatown, she's in New York and, and I saw a, a Chinese doctor and, you know, he gave me some of those herbs to drink and he gave me a treatment cleared it up and just, I knew when she said that, and I don't get this much, by the way, I usually just will listen to someone's story, but there was like a, that feels like an answer. And I was going to go to Chinatown here in LA. I went to Conscious Life Expo where I was working and there was a Chinese doctor who had a booth and it was beautiful. He gave me a treatment. He gave me things to take home. Things are clearing up that quickly in a couple of days. So there's a lot of truth to that. I'm a living example. I'm sure you have tons of stories and people out there have tons of stories about when you just are able to be in the state you put us in, that's when the miracles can happen. 
That's yes. What and it's happens. always been inside of them, right? Like you like, just like for you, everyone tuning in, it's always been inside of you. You're just kind of like Debbie said, just creating the space to see it and pay attention to it. And, and, uh, the, the wisdom, the insights, the revelations, they will come naturally. You, it's just miraculous. I love it. This is my favorite thing. Yeah. I understand that you do energy forecasts. So inquiring minds would like to know what is the energy forecast for now or going forward? Mm. So here's the thing. I think it's all about perspective. I think everyone has their own unique perspective and they bring so much beauty uh, as part of the one. My perspective is always to uplift and inspire mm -hmm. and to remind people just like this healing work of the divinity that they are so they can come back to that and really fully embrace that. So that's the the way, that's kind of like the language that these are always written. Um, because I do get asked, you know, why is it always so positive? Why does it, um, you know, things are really hard and stuff. But I said, look, we know things are really hard. We know there's a lot of challenges happening, but there's a lot of good happening. And the way that I want to word it for you is that when the light just expands and grows, sometimes the contrast to light also needs to come to the surface to be seen and acknowledged in such a way so that the light can just like a warm embrace, love it in such a way that that, some people call it shadow, you know, the humanity shadow, uh, whatever it is, can actually become the light. Because without the light, you know, the, the shadow actually, it is the light. It's just a facet of the light. And we don't want to vilify it. Again, that's what a lot of people did with uh, the mind, the ego. And it's going to keep us on a hamster wheel of struggle. So through gentle uh, massaging, you know, energetic massaging, uh, I try to write these in a way that can help people remember that it's not all doom and gloom. Actually, the fact that there's so much chaos happening, there's so much um, changes happening, whether it's in technology, whether it's in humanity, the evolution and, and the earth, there's light that is bringing all of this to the surface in such a way that now we can love those parts of ourselves that we've neglected and we've been maybe uh, not kind to and loving to, and then allow it all to turn into the light because it is the light. So the thing is, when you have somebody um, who is maybe not behaving in a classroom and they are uh, talking back to the teacher and they're being giving her an attitude or him an attitude. Um, it's because they need to be acknowledged. They need something. They need, they need to be seen, heard, loved. And maybe they don't know how to receive that because their living environment didn't support that. So the key is for us to do it for ourselves first. That's why the core work for me is so important because, and I do it every day, like it's it's the first thing that I do, first I do gratitude and then I do that because if I'm not showing up for myself completely from this space, the the elder grandmother energy that I, that I tap into, it could be whatever for you, how can I do that for other people completely? So imagine if you make that just your daily, um, work is to show up for yourself and love yourself and be there for yourself and not uh, be hard on yourself when let's say you drop a glass of water and so I know so many of us get frustrated when that happens but just practicing that will add the light in such a way to the healing of humanity that others will start to do that for themselves and others and it'll start to create a ripple effect so that the world that we know is coming, the world that we know is it's here can happen and fully integrate much more quickly. And I know you know, Deb, that I'm there's like a lot of words in between words. Yeah. I'm trying to say it in the most loving and gentle way. So mm, 
That's beautiful. I, because of who you are and where you operate, I'm curious if you have ever had UFO or extraterrestrial experience, if you don't mind sharing. That's so cool. Nobody's ever asked me that. So thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I actually have one was with a friend. Um, and it was very interesting because it was in Los Angeles. We were driving on the 405. If anyone knows um, the 405, we were going from the airport towards the valley. So we were like going into and we were looking up and we saw a green um, kind of spiral and then it kind of just disappeared. I thought, OK, maybe it's a. Um, a satellite or some type of thing. And even my friend Mike was like, yeah, that's so interesting because there was no debris, nothing. It just kind of like was this green sparkle energy did like a few turns and then just dissolved. Um, and then next day we found out that Dr. Wayne Dyer had transitioned. Well, it was interesting. The only reason why I say that is because the timing of what was happening, what we saw, and what we heard his transition time was, was so, and I've never met him, I don't know him, but I just felt it was too synchronistic. And he had transitioned at that same exact time. Mm. He had, you know, and that was very interesting. So that was one. Um, I do sometimes see kind of like, it's never this way it's kind of like the peripherals i see mm -hmm. orbs and you know pink and blue and um uh, sparks and things like that and i've seen one other time uh, i was in santa monica um in california and i was looking out at the ocean and i just you know two or three going straight down I thought was that a shooting star so you know the mind always like oh no it can't be but i do believe at some point it exists. And I, I'm sure it happened. Um, and I know that the, there's a lot of people who experience them. So I, I say, yeah, maybe I have. <laughs> cool. And do you want more? Would you be interested in conscious communication with another being, a benevolent? I will make that clear, benevolent being. Yeah. You know, here's the thing. The work that I have so committed to doing um, you know, I've always said that I want it to be very non-personality based, meaning it's coming straight from the source of everything. It's the stream of everything. Um, but that has evolved in the sense that if we are all experiences of the whole, mm -hmm. as long as the being or the energy that is we are in communion is acknowledging the oneness, mm -hmm. I'm good with that. It's That's coming beautiful. from the oneness. If it's, you know, maybe not coming from that space, I'm like, no, thanks. I'm good. <laughs> well, that's a great explanation. I love that. I hope people listening can create a little bit of those who have felt any concern um, because it is coming. I mean, it is, it's been here for mm -hmm. forever since ancient times. And I've, I feel strongly that they were some of the first populations here. But, and that we are very much seeds of that. We're not just human earthlings. We are galactic beings. So that's a really beautiful point of view to understand. Just like here on earth, it doesn't matter what you look like or what your uh, sexual, familial, gender, anything choices are. None of it matters. You know, it's just the, truly what you said. It is the oneness. It's like, what are you serving? And if you're serving the light, then it can be a beautiful connection. Mm. And uh, just to add one little thing to that is that little piece in the beginning where we talked about relating to everything, having a relationship with everything, even, you know, I like in the beginning, I started with things that don't have personalities like people, uh, because sometimes people have challenging personalities, right? So, but your chair, your the bowl that you eat your food from, or the plate or the glass you drink from, they don't talk back and they don't have, you know, attitudes. And so 
for some people, and for me, I was one of them, it was easier to begin there with just things, because then I could recognize I have this relationship with this thing. And when I'm grateful, oh my gosh, you start to connect. And all of a sudden, one day you start to be in traffic and you're driving and someone cuts you off and all that. And you're just like, you have almost like a euphoric experience. You're like, oh my God, I'm sending them love. All is good next and then and it's like this oneness that just happens it may not happen right away but with intention daily you just start to live in the oneness and I think uh to anyone listening this is what was the because I grew up Catholic the first few years of well first uh 12 years of my life and there was a lot of fear that they put in like be afraid of God be afraid of this sinning da 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 whatever And that was a thing that I had to unwind from. But when I started to practice oneness and and create this understanding that we're all in a relationship with each other, I even now appreciate Catholicism. I appreciate every religion because it's all part of the one. There's no good or bad. There's no right or wrong. Yes, some of them become cults, some don't. But the, the good news is you don't have to participate in any of that. You can just be that loving presence because we're already having a relationship with it all anyway. Do we want it to be contentious or do we want it to be nice, loving, respectful? And that's what I choose. Mm, Yeah, I love that. And, you know, I have this thing and I don't know why I came up with it, but it helps me so much. I live in Los Angeles. um, So I made a decision a long time ago, anytime somebody was zigzagging and cutting off or, you know, just doing this really like aggressive, trying to get ahead, I decided there was a woman in the car about to have a baby. And then so I totally <laughs> back off in blessings, you know, like, go, 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 get yes. where you need to go and get there safely. <laughs> yes. I love that. I'm going to use that one. <laughs> You're having a baby. Have a good baby. We need another indigo child. Mm-hmm. That's <laughs> a good wh- one. Yeah. What is your stance on, for you, um, on psychedelics or plant medicine? Do you use them? Do you believe in them? Not for you? I am all for them. I I respect it. Um, Again, because it's part of the natural elements, um, I believe that it has its place. And if it's done in a way that is, um, you know, someone knows what they're doing, right? Um, but I haven't taken anything personally. Um, I feel like we all all roads lead to the same place. So I think if you do them through um, plant medicine and and uh, psychedelics, that's beautiful. And I have a lot of friends who do. Um, and then if you do it just through mindfulness and the core work or meditation or healing or just going for a walk, you can also do it that way. I feel like it's all I I'm again, gentle is the word for me. So as long as you know, I'm slow and steady, and taking it easy, that's what works for me. But some people need it to be very extreme and fast. And that's perfect. It's perfect. It's just not me. Got it. Interesting. Yeah, cool. How about Uh, you? I want to know about your perspective of that. Yeah, my perspective is, uh, for me, energy, thank you for asking. Yeah, I'm, I'm 100% energy. I feel like I don't know anything, right? Same. Or I think I know a lot. So originally I was, when I first heard about plant medicine and somebody invited me to go do that, I was like, oh my God, that's crazy. I would never, who would sit there for four days or a week or anyway, I, I didn't say that to their face, but I was like, that's nuts out. And then, you know, the universe laughed because months later they say, that ayahuasca, for instance, of the many things you could drink is grandmother, right? Grandmother energy. Mm. And grandmother absolutely tapped me and said, um, it's time. And I was beside myself. Like that was a huge 360. So I surrendered. And the moment I surrendered, everything came to me. Um, because of my podcast, uh, I ha- connected with a very, very reputable place in Costa Rica. They invited me to actually do something reciprocal in order to bring me. And then they also brought my boyfriend at the same time. And he did a little bit of work for them. 
um, I just really opened up and it was profound, really profound experience. And I will say, and I've done it about 25 times, ayahuasca, yahe, um, huachuma, and all very, very different. I today feel satisfied. I've also done mushrooms like quite a bit. Um, I still have an affinity for mushrooms. The ayahuasca has is so much, right now is like, I'm good. Although I've met some beautiful shamans recently that it's like, mm, if I was <laughs> ever to do this again, that feels like that could be profound. Mm. So I'm open, but I let my spirit or whatever that energy is that informs me to tell me what to do. But what's very interesting about that is in 2019, I had such a big experience where the divine was telling me things about myself that were gorgeous and utterly confusing. It felt like that that is not me. And um, they wouldn't let up. So when they want to make a point, they are <laughs> yep. gentle, very gentle and loving, but they were very clear. And so I finally surrendered last mm. November and I am now taking a six month shaman practitioner program. Wow. And so I don't know where it's going. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Maybe it'll be a part of this or how I help my clients, but I just follow energy. Right. Oh, I could see. I, I just got retreats for you, big ones. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? I don't know. Just doing retreats, leading them, hosting them. Yeah. Oh, God. Well, that's synchronistic. And I'll just say this before we get back to you. That's so beautiful. Thank you for that. That beautiful God hit. Oh, right it's already there. done. Yeah. Because I've wanted to do this. I've wanted to do it with our music. So much, so much to step into the healer. And I just out of nowhere got an email from somebody I don't even know who says, I found you and I want to know if you want to do retreats because I can help you get there. And I'm like, how is that possible? Yes. <laughs> then here you are the next day. Yes. Hercules. Thank you so much. We are all one. Yes. <laughs> we truly are. Wow. So this is an off question, but I'm going to go here because you help people. I know you help people from celebrities on. I know you've shared the stages with some of our biggest luminaries. And, and I feel because of the level of healer you are, you, you could help people. So I know a couple and they're a beautiful couple. They're beautiful together. There's so much I could say about how they are and what they've created and who they be together. And yet there is a place in their life that is this terrible impasse. He said, she said, mm -hmm. they can't seem to communicate. And I love these people and I want so much to see them succeed and they want to succeed. And they're so sad right now. Mm -hmm. And it's not a good conversation because nobody's really listening. Mm -hmm. um, it gets a little bit ugly and that ugly destroys all this beauty they have. And it's just this really one place, but how they lack of communicate and argue destroys them and the actual uh, incident that seems to continue without needs getting met. And that's, so anyway, what would you do with something like that? Yeah, so I would work with them first individually and mm -hmm. we would see some of the habits that they're partaking in that are leading to some of the fight or flight or maybe the shutting down um, uh, reaction. So once we get clear on that, we start to love and honor and kind of like rebuild those parts of themselves that are feeling not heard or feeling like uh, they need to be in the fight or flight or they feel. So we would do that. And then once both of them have sort of gotten to a place where they can actually listen and be um, neutral then we would bring them back together so that they can see if their path would continue. And the thing about this work is, although I'm rooting, right? You and I, we root for the for those and uh, to stay together and be, sometimes it's not meant to be in that way and that's okay. But if they have, and they're willing to have like um, a resolution. That's the most important thing is, mm -hmm. are they willing? Then they are, then we would do the work on each individual and then bring them together. But it's about being willing. I agree. I, it seems to me that you have to make a choice. Like I love, I'm committed. 
no exits. Like, let's mm-hmm. make this happen. Right. You know, and then you care so much about the other person. You're not going to give things up in yourself, but to find a way so you can get your needs met and you're happy. I can get my needs met wherever there can be that crossover. I think it's, yes. it's huge. Yeah. Beautiful. And you have this very spiritual approach to prosperity. Yeah. Oh what yeah. Is, we talked about that before. I think. What is your approach for spiritual folks out there that they can create financial wealth? Mm. So it's so interesting because I never realized how full circle it was, but when we were talking about relationships, we were talking about relationships with the chair and the oxygen and the, you know, all that. And money is a living, breathing energy. It's not just this lifeless thing because there's this energy and this energy is the, the embodiment of circulation giving, receiving, and that thing always changes, right? Sometimes it's NFTs, sometimes it's um, uh, crypto, sometimes who knows what's what it's going to be next, money, um, sometimes it's gold. And the, the most important thing is it's not about that object itself, it's about what it represents. And when you start to do that, you give it humanity. And you give it understanding and love and compassion. That was the big breakthrough for me. Um, I actually wrote a book about it. Um, Easy Breezy Prosperity in 2016, I believe, um, which really humanizes this thing that we have sometimes not knowingly abused. You know, a lot of people in the spiritual community um, vilify money. They vilify having, um, you know, finance, financial stability and success, because these old indoctrined behaviors from religion, from, um, and beliefs from religion and just ideology that made us believe that they are separate. But if everything is one and you are one with, you know, you're having a relationship with the chair, you're having a relationship with your friends, your family, you're also having a relationship with money. And how can we heal your relationship with money, not see money as bad and all all that, but how can we shift your approach the way that we're shifting it towards your mind and your body and your spirit? Now we're speaking the language of, oh, wait a minute, money is a blessing. It's a gift. It's an extension of me. It's no longer separate. Now, what would life look like if you lived your life from that space? You're open. Are you going to be more open to opportunities that you weren't seeing now? Are you going to be more open to listening to your intuition to tell you uh, what maybe you thought you, you needed? Now you actually can give it to yourself. So ultimately, it's about humanizing our relationship with money and not seeing it as a lifeless object, but seeing it as a living, breathing energy that wants to serve it wants to help you and when you're abusing it it's going to run the other direction but if you actually make peace with it and love it and honor it and some of those trigger points within you that feel cringy towards it then you're going to start healing and inviting it back in can you give an example like um it can be from your life or a client's life but some way that they uh, weren't creating with money and that was an obstacle and what they did, how they spoke to it or got into relation with it that created a change. Oh yeah. I mean, so many uh, clients, this is one thing that we do in our, uh, with my mentoring and coaching work, but um, I always like to use myself as the reference because, you know, I know myself the best. So um, for me, it was um, kind of letting go because I initially came to California to be a music artist. I wow. wanted to be a in more mainstream, like pop artist and all that. Wow. And um, I was in the business. I had a deal. Like we were, you know, everything was was going in a good direction. But I was noticing that there was a big imbalance um, with what I was receiving from the business as opposed to what I was giving, because I was like literally giving everything and doing everything and sleeping in my car, like doing all this stuff to make it happen. Um, And it was what I was seeing was a lot of um, 
you know, gossip and backstabbing and people doing things and not so much towards me, but just seeing what people do to each other and um, to get ahead. And it just wasn't feeling in alignment at the time. This was like circa 2003 to seven, eight. Hmm. Um, and and I know it's changed a lot now, uh, but it's definitely um, at that time, it was still the the business, the music business had, it was an industry that had a hold on the artist. Now you have TikTok, you have all these things that you can really break through. Um, anyway, I, I decided to hang that up and continue on with my studies. And I'm grateful that I did. But I realized that a lot of that, um, imbalance with giving and receiving was because I experienced uh, great poverty in my early childhood. So wow. um, I remember sleeping in the convent um, on the cement floor in the basement mm. with my mom for years uh, mm. with one little thin blanket and we'd eat bread. I mean, it's not that good of a situation right now financially over there in Lebanon, but um, it was definitely a challenging time. So there was these, these, um, um, experiences that made me believe that that's what it had to be. But there's another side of me, I call this my uh, uh, rising Sagittarius, I have a rising Sag, and I'm a moon in Sag. So lots of kind of keep going kind of defiant against uh, authority. So um, balances the Taurus very well. Mm -hmm. And they, um, I realized that there could be more I just didn't know how, but I, I just kind of surrendered and put my book, you know, my nose to the book, studied, um, learned, practiced. I didn't even worry, even just the, the practice that I do and, and the healing work that I've, I'm so grateful to do. Um, I didn't go into it thinking even it to be like a huge successful business. I just wanted to help people. And when I stood in that and I also did my inner work of balancing my giving and receiving, the prosperity just started coming in. And I even wrote a book about it and, and just clients and word of mouth and then opportunities and speaking at the United Nations and doing this and doing that. Like it just happened. Mm. And you know, it's so funny because I always wanted a mentor. I always wanted somebody to do that for me, open doors and help me and all that. And I've never really had that specific thing happen. Um, so I realized early on, I needed to do that for myself. And the way I do that for myself is to do the healing work around the imbalances that were going on, whether it's poverty, whether it's relationships, whatever, to be open, to be a vessel and ready for opportunities when they come, because opportunities always come. You just have to be uh, so clear and present to see if that opportunity is for you or not. Mm -hmm. And that's what has expanded the, the prosperity. And hopefully it'll keep expanding. Beautiful. So we can all work on our relationships with money and anything for that matter that we want yes. to expand and prosper. Yeah, but always start with yourself. That's the most important thing. When you mm -hmm. make showing up for your mind and your body and your spirit, the number one priority, the money will just come. It'll just become natural. Well, Emmanuel, this is Dare to Dream. What are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Oh, my God. First of all, thank you for this beautiful conversation. I love your questions. They're amazing. I love your energy and your presence. I feel like definitely kindred spirit vibes with you. Um, and thank you for, for just all that you do and you share and you offer to the world. So I'm just sending you so much love. And I also want to send love to the listeners. Um, you know, I have so much love and respect for anyone just on the path to knowing themselves more and uh, being willing to try different things and think outside of the box. So I want to commend you for that. Um, my next dream or some of some of the next dreams are to finish the next book which is very close to finishing it is going to be the work the core work book which i'm excited about um so probably in a year or two and just continuing to 
show up for myself in such a way that I can show up for others even more. Like those are the two things right now that I'm really excited and dreaming about. Awesome. And I know with all the work you do that you've got um, something for the listeners, for the viewers. And what is that URL and what is that gift? Yes. So we have, they can either get it from emmanueldagger.com. So that's just my name, E-double-M-A-N-U-E-L, dagger, D-A-G-H-E-R.com. On the homepage, they will receive three audio healing meditations. Um, One of them is about really transcending worry. Um, I can't remember the other two right now off the top of my head, but um, there's a package for them. It's about three hours of sessions for them. And if they would, they're not able to get it from that page, they can go to expand.emmanueldagger.com backslash or forward slash gifts. So expand.emmanueldagger.com forward slash gifts. Great. And I'm going to put that also in the show notes. So folks who want to go, you can just click on the link. It will be there for you. So you can I'm sorry, folks who are interested, this will be in the show notes. So I'll have the link there. You can click there and get the very generous three hours of healing modalities. So you can engage more with Emmanuel and also with your spirit to heal. Anything you want to say here at the end, Emmanuel? I'm just so grateful. Uh, As you know, and we don't have to go into details, it was a a journey to get here today and we did it and I'm so grateful and I actually feel so good and and happy and healthy uh so thank you uh yes right on that's so beautiful folks so just a reminder for you two to show up for your life and allow it's supposed to come in to come in we're always supported and loved and seen I end today's show with this quote from Michael Altshuler the bad news is time flies The good news is you're the pilot. Thank you so much for joining us today on Dare to Dream. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. Leave a comment. Please share it. And next week on the show, I am featuring the amazing Sheldon Eeps, author of the new book, My Own Directions. I just have to say I grew up because I was originally an actress and a singer for the majority of my life before 15 years ago, I went into this podcasting, coaching and all of that. And so he's a hero. Uh, So that his publicist reached out to me is such a big deal because he's huge on the Broadway scene. Sheldon is one of the all time most influential African-American theater leaders, as well as a prolific director of television. He's directed on Broadway, The West End, and is the director of the upcoming BET Plus movie, Christmas Party Crashers. So please join us for that. And again, so many of you came up to me this weekend at Conscious Life Expo and expressed how much you loved the podcast, and that's how you even got to the expo and how you found some of the guests. Be sure to comment so I know you're out there. I do read them all and I do engage. Thank you so much. Use the healing techniques that our beautiful Emmanuel shared with us today so you can be that little pebble that's actually the huge ripples out into the world of healing. You're here for great purpose. Remember to dare to dream, create all your dreams into your reality.